Today we'll be discussing Jamaica Kinke, a Caribbean American writer whose essays, stories, and novels are evocative portrayals of family relationships and her relationship with her native land, Antigua. Kinke, whose original name was Elaine Potter Richardson, was born on May 25, 1949, in St. John's, Antigua. She actually grew up in relative poverty with her mother, a literate, cultured woman and homemaker, and her stepfather, who at the time was a carpenter. But more so, she was more close to her mother. And they actually had a very intense, tight relationship, which is reflected in her works, as, as I'll get to later. But that relationship was interrupted when her three brothers were born in quick succession when she was nine years old. She quotes, Our family money remained the same, but there were more people to feed and to clothe, and so everything got sort of shortened. Not only material things, but the emotional things, the good emotional things. I got the short end of that. But then I got more things I didn't have, like a certain kind of cruelty and neglect. Kincaid was educated in the British colonial education system as Antigua did not gain independence from England until about 1981. She was actually pretty smart and frequently tested at the top of her class, but her mother removed her from school at 16 to help support the family when her third and last brother was born. In 1966, when Kincaid was 17, her mother sent her to Scarsdale, a wealthy suburb of New York City, to work as an au pair. While she was an au pair, she started writing for the Teenage Girls magazine and changed her name to Jamaica Kincaid in 1973. She describes this name change as a way for her to do things without being the same person who couldn't do them, the same person who had all these weights. Kincaid explained that Jamaica is an English corruption of what Columbus called Jamaica, the part of the world she comes from, and Kincaid just prepared to go well with Jamaica, as she quotes. In 1976, she became the staff writer for the New Yorker magazine. Although Kincaid's writings often chronicled Caribbean cultures and traditions in a reminiscent tone, looking back on the things that she did in the past, the main focus of most of her writings was the relationship between mother and daughter, which I will highlight later in this presentation. Critics often say her work prioritizes impressions and feelings over plot development and features conflict with both a strong maternal figure and colonial and neoclassical influences. Her writings explore themes such as colonialism and colonial legacy, post-colonialism and neocolonialism, gender, sexuality, renaming, mother-daughter relationships as said before, and British and American imperialism, as well as colonial education, writing, racism, class, power. And the list goes on forever. Jamaica Kincaid wrote about everything. In her novel, Lucy, Kincaid gives us a brief glimpse into what life may have been like for her as a pair when she first moved from the Caribbean island of Antigua to the United States. At 19 years old, the protagonist, Lucy Potter, leaves her British root Caribbean island with hopes for a good future, but instantly grows disillusioned upon arriving in America to work as an au pair for an affluent family, whose lives seemingly contrast hers. One can say that Lucy, the book, parallels the film Parasite in the sense that it highlights the social disparities among classes and really digs deep into how different the lives are of somebody who's, say, Mariah and somebody who's Lucy. So the characters. The protagonist, Lucy Josephine Potter, She's an au pair for a wealthy American family and the novel's protagonist and narrator. You can tell from the beginning of the novel more than anything, Lucy just wants independence, freedom. She suffers frequent dissatisfaction and delusion when it comes to relationships with women and her new existence fails to meet her expectations. She also experiences moments of hope throughout the novel and peace and demonstrates great strength and determination in her quest to live on her own terms. Next we have Mariah, the woman of the house. Even though she comes off as a liberal person, she often offends Lucy with her condescending arrogance and her privileged upbringing. I think Kincaid uses Mariah as a tool in order to display that even the rich have problems. As the novel goes on and Lucy's relationship with Mariah begins to strengthen, we get to see the more soft sides that Mariah has. 
So after we're introduced to Mariah, we begin to see that Lucy begins to grow closer to her and build a relationship with her, actually. But at the same time, Lucy is recognizing the differences between her impoverished colonial background in Antigua and Mariah's privileged circumstances. The whole book seems to be an up and down emotional roller coaster of Lucy internally processing everything that's happening to her in real life. The disrespect she gets, the pain she feels, the longing for, the longing for being in stability. You can see that Lucy is tired of taking orders from others and that she's tired of constantly being reminded that she's inferior. And not just socially inferior. Lucy has been struggling with her identity for her entire life as you see in the novel. Her identity as a person, as a woman, as a daughter. When she looks back on how Mariah treated her and her relationship with her, she begins to see that she loved her. But at the same time, she loved her because she reminded her of her mother. In chapter three, she says, the times that I loved Mariah, it was because she reminded me of my mother. The times that I did not love Mariah, it was because she reminded me of my mother. It wasn't her fault, it was my fault. But nothing can change the fact that where she saw beautiful flowers, I saw sorrow and bitterness. Those two quotes alone can show you the seesaw, the complexity of struggle that Lucy is beginning to face and come to terms with at this point in the novel. She's beginning to come to terms with the fact that she has a love-hate relationship with her boss, Mariah. And she begins to highlight the differences in which they see life. Mariah from a more elevated point of view, seemingly oblivious to the struggles that Lucy faces, 